All right, guys, so let's go ahead and finish off chapter one. Really quick, just a couple minutes, uh, section 1.4 and a summary of the chapter. Okay, so section 1.4 talks about different examples of the applications of AI uh, in a modern context, right? So let's just go through some of these. You know, you can think about, you know, where I, AI is being used today in modern times, 2020. Right, so robotic vehicles, you know, self-driving cars, you know, there's a lot of different companies that are working on that right now. And a big worry is that automation for, you know, tractor trailer rigs, delivering goods uh, is going to put a lot of people out of work. So robotic vehicles um, are uh, certainly being used. Speech recognition, anytime you've talked to uh, Alexa or if you have talked into your phone to make a text, or maybe you're on some kind of automated system, um, you know, say one if you want billing, say two if you want, you know, check your balance, you know, any of those kind of systems, speech recognition, AI. Um, autonomous planning and scheduling. So the textbook gives an example of, um, in the International Space Station, I think it was, or, or the space shuttle. Right, where they had an AI that basically planned out the day for astronauts to make sure that they were um, as efficient as possible with their time, with their use of with the use of their time, right, up there in space. Game playing that should be pretty obvious. Uh, the the one thing um, to note from that part of the text, when the text is talking about game playing, is that now um, chess. Humans can't beat the computer at chess anymore, <laughs> right? It used to be that, you know, world chess champions could beat the uh, computer, you know, three out of five or something like that. Now they're lucky if they can tie. Uh, spam fighting, you know, there's different levels of success with that. You know, you got a spam filter. If you have a mail client, you know about this. Logistics planning. Now this one to me was really interesting as somebody who's a World War II buff. Right, um, history of World War II, pulling off the logistics for D-Day was one of the most amazing things in um, history, really. I mean, one of the reasons that Eisenhower was chosen to lead the Allied forces was because of his organizational ability, his planning ability. It was all about his logistical ability, planning D-Day, that really made it a success. And so the text talks about how, I mean, I mean, that took months for them to plan, right? So text talks about how during one of the Iraq wars, the first Iraq war, you know, there's a t tremendous amount of planning that went into that and they used artificial intelligence to plan it all, get the number of tanks, that right number of uniforms, fuel, you know, all that kind of stuff. And apparently the AI software that they used was able to put together those plans in a matter of days rather than weeks or months. Right? It's a pretty incredible. Um, robotics, um, Roomba, right? I mean, you need to talk about Roomba um, or any kind of you know, automated factory. AI is certainly controlling those machines. Uh, machine translation, example, Google Translate, right? Hop on Google, translate English to Spanish. Uh, Contrary to the problems that they had early on and during the Cold War, trying to translate that Russian into English, now the technology we have is pretty good. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. I mean, you could go to, you know, say Central America, and if you didn't know Spanish, you could take Google Translate with you and be able to survive, right? So, yeah, I mean, these are all different modern applications of AI where AI is really making a huge difference in everybody's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so let's summarize the chapter. Right, so AI, different angles, and this is what your first time it's going to be about, right? How are you going to think about AI or what are some definitions for AI? Are you talking about, um, you know, thinking? Are you talking about how a machine thinks or how it behaves? Should you be trying to um, make a machine that acts like a human or base it off of human behavior or do you have some other kind of standard, some kind of ideal? Um, so 
we're concerned with treating intelligence as if it was rational, right? We're trying to make an agent, an intelligent agent, act rationally, right? And have it make decisions that make sense. And so an intelligent agent tries to take the best possible actions to maximize or to do its best to get you the best possible outcome. That's not always going to be possible, but a rational agent, an intelligent agent, is going to take those actions which try to get you the best outcome, even if it even if it doesn't even if it's not successful. Okay. Philosophers um, had a huge contributions to AI. If it wasn't for them, we couldn't even conceive of it because they were able to demonstrate, at least to a limited extent, that the mind works like a machine, and so we can model a mind by using a machine artifact. Mathematicians, they gave us tools to work with logic. They gave us um, the framework, the foundations for computation and also for putting together algorithms, right? They gave us the mathematical language to be able to do that and also to analyze the efficiency of said algorithms. Okay, um, economists, they studied human behavior and gave us the understanding or they tried to describe the problem of how um, individuals within an environment try to make decisions that maximize, maximize their own personal benefit, their own personal outcomes. Okay, so neuroscientists, they contributed by discovering how brains and computers can be thought to work in a similar fashion. Okay, um, psychologists showed that humans and animals, well, humans are animals. It's kind of funny, we always say, well, humans and animals, like, like humans aren't animals. Of course we're animals, right? Um, but, you know, we're anthropomorphic or anthrocentric, right? Um, anthropomorphocentric, whatever. <laughs> trying to say, you know, we, we think about ourselves because we're humans. Um, anyway, so humans, animals, human animals, information processing machines, right? Langu linguists showed us how language fits into the overall picture. Computer engineers, they're the ones who make the machines, who make the artifacts from which we can manifest artificial intelligence. Okay, control theory. Um, control theory is what allows us to create artifacts that can make decisions based on feedback from their environment or from how they perceive their environment. Okay, history of AI, stops and starts, booms and busts, right? Somebody describes something new, discovers something new, there's a fury of activity until it hits a wall, right? And then they go off and work on something else. And so there's been these starts and stops until we finally um, arrived to where we're at today, okay? Um, scientific method has really, 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 really helped with the systematic study and um, development of AI technologies, right? Because of that whole you know, publishing your work, having it be reviewed, you know, other your peers being able to test and reproduce your work and all that sort of thing we talked about uh, in the previous video. In AI, it's everywhere, right? All kinds of disciplines are um, taking advantage of AI or contributing to AI. All right, so that's chapter one. So what you'll want to do next is you'll want to move on. And if you haven't already, work on the quiz and then get started with your homework setup.